Well, joining us is Charlotte Littlewood, a former counter extremism coordinator for the UK government. Charlotte, great to have you back on the programme. I mean, remind us of what's happened in 2021 and quite how we've got to a situation today where that young teacher is still in hiding, suffering from PTSD, apparently he's uh, had uh, suicidal thoughts, and yet it's taken, what, three years for us to actually seemingly partially address this problem. Absolutely. I mean, this is one of a number of cases in which there have been threats to staff, threats to students, and there hasn't been the right kind of approach from government and policing. And I think what's really important here with what Dame Sara Khan is doing is she's just drawing attention to the victims of, well, one of these freedom restricting har harassment act has been extreme anti-blasphemy action, which is noted here with Bately and Wakefield. Um, but by drawing our attention to the victims of extreme anti-blasphemy agitation, it's just changing that lens and that perspective, switching the, the culture, hopefully, from one which seems to pander to the extremists and be there for those that are, are crying blasphemy, rather than those that are being harassed, um, receiving death threats, and then resulting in having to flee, taking themselves into hiding. That's something that's really interesting that Sarah Khan brought up, that the family was very let down by the police, and actually they're keeping themselves in hiding. It's not as if they are being actively protected. Um, and, and I thought it was quite ironic how the police have assess the situation to have been handled well because no violence was committed but in fact that was because the teacher himself took himself away uh, so that prevention of violence wasn't actually in effect because of the police's work but in effect because of the teacher taking themselves out of the situation so what Sarah Khan is doing is just bringing the attention to the victims of this kind of activity and showing that the government needs to step up, step up and police needs to step up and the culture needs to t change so that we can understand and view these people as the victim rather than the perpetrator actually as the victim. And Charlotte, we still haven't done anything about this poor teacher from Batsby. You're quite right. Uh, uh, the authorities let him down, the police let him down and uh, most specifically the head teacher let him down on that day when he had to flee the school because he'd had the temerity to try to teach and educate some of his pupils about what happened in Paris with the Charlie Hebdo uh, cartoon and all that. The uh, headmaster issued a grovelling apology to the demonstrators, allegedly part of the Muslim community, uh, protesting outside the school gates. Uh, so the point is, is when Dame Sarah Khan talks about people being afraid to talk about Islamism, their feelings about Muslimism, their feelings about extremism, it's because the authorities demonstrate no resolve. Uh, this teacher did not break the law because we don't have blasphemy laws in this country. All this teacher did was to do his job and try and teach his kids about something, to educate them. And for mm. that, he remains in exile, suffering from PD PTSD and apparently suicidal. He has a wife and three or four kids, I do believe. He's only a young guy and the authorities have done nothing but abandon him. We've got to, sh we've got to show, we've got to be tougher, haven't we? Uh, when we stand up for our values. I think it's even worse than that. I think it's even worse than that. It's not negligence. It's even pandering. When you saw the the case of the autistic young boy who dropped the Quran and it was yeah. scuffed. That was in the same area yeah, as example. the Batley Grammar School, the Wakefield School. And we understand that the head teacher responded in the way they did, pandering to to the extremists and setting up a situation in which. Uh, the mother of the child was interrogated and the apology was given to the local Muslim community rather than to the autistic child who was, again, receiving death threats. The, the explanation here was a fear of what happened at Batley happen, happening at Wakefield and they want to prevent that from happening. So it's more than negligence. It's actively um, endorsing this behaviour, allowing for this behaviour and in a sense giving the win to the extremists um, and punishing the victims even further.
Yeah, and, I mean, on that, uh, who are these people who suddenly appear at school gates? Are they just local mm. concerned citizens? Is it a mob that are nationwide who are able to just quickly coordinate using social media? And secondly, there's a lot of discussion of if we have a Labour government of bringing in legislation to combat so-called Islamophobia. Is that going to leave the door open for such sort of, you know, extremists to be able to say, you can't criticise us, you can't critique our religion or our viewpoints if if you do, you are committing a hate crime. Okay, two questions there. Um, so <laughs> firstly, um, who? So Dame Sarah Khan actually hasn't addressed who in this report, but there have been other reports that have come out very recently. The report from the Commission on Counting Extremism on blasphemy was very useful. And if you read that in tandem with the report that I wrote last year for the Henry Jackson Society, you really get the sense of who, when it comes to the Islamists, are the perpetrators of what she's referring to as freedom restricting harassment, FRH. And they are linked to extreme organizations, Islamist organizations, particularly in Pakistan. Tariq Labaik is, uh, is mentioned quite a few times. And these are political organizations based in the subcontinent that care very much about controlling whether or not Mohammedan Islam is insulted. And that, is, that idea is managing to cross borders and find organizations uh, pretending to be charities even in the UK that perpetuate this kind of hatred. And and create this this culture in the UK and it's going grossly untackled but I, I am very hopeful in seeing these series of, of reports coming out that there is a, I would say a rush to get things done now ahead of a potential yeah, change of briefly, government. Briefly Charlotte because we've got to uh, end yes. this very Islamophobia. soon. The, the idea of bringing into law Islamophobia is a hate crime. Yeah. We have we have law to tackle hate crime, uh, racism, hate on account of protected characteristics. It's not required. It's the same for anti-Hindu hate and anti-Semitism. There are there are laws in place for this. There is no need to give a, a special law. It's about training of police uh, and uh, local authorities around different types of hate, so they're equipped and ready to deal with it. But we we have the le the 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 legal uh, tools at hand. We don't need any more law. Yeah, and these community leaders who gather outside schools and whatever for the Muslim community, mm. uh, nobody wants to insult their religion or insult Mohammed. Nobody wants to undermine their deep-seated spiritual beliefs. But they have to be told, no ifs, no buts, it is not against the law to insult Mohammed in this country. We have no blasphemy laws. Mm. So get with the programme. Charlotte, fantastic to talk with you as always.